This week, the HPT is in the Sunshine State at the Daytona Beach Kennel Club and Poker Room in Daytona Beach, Florida. 376 players started this race to become the newest HPT champion. Familiar faces like Annie Duke, Greg Raymer, Chino Ream, and familiar friends of the HPT were on hand to play against some of Florida's best. And now five remain at one of the most competitive HPT final tables in recent history. $168,000 and an HPT championship is waiting at the finish line for tonight's Top Dog. I'm Joe from Okoe, Florida. My name is Rebecca Karansky. My name is Rod Rodrigue. My name is Travis Klein. My name is Nick Swarman. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Well, playing on TV is a little intimidating, but I'm just going to have to focus on my poker game. I'm going to have to make some moves early, but I'm definitely not going to rush it, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, because I'm the old guy at the table, you might see me nodding off. It's been a long day. Kind of describe it from a sleep to kamikaze. So that my, my range is in there. That's my style of play. I've got to open up. I was playing really tight earlier, and uh, I'm going to continue to play tight, but I'm going to open up a bit and uh, take some chips. They come from all walks of life, each with a story to tell. All they need is a chip and a chair. It's an open casting call for those who love the game. This ain't your weekend home game. This is the HPT. Sit right down, put on your poker face, you with the big dogs now. Better bring your best game, talk trash on your wall. To me, it's all the same, you won't leave with much when you come in second place. I'm the one with the stack showing seven to the jack on cry to your mama cause I'm sending you back I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Hello and welcome to the HPT. We are at Daytona Beach Kennel Club and Poker Room in Daytona Beach, Florida. I'm Chris Hansen. To my left, as always, is Fred Bevel. What a great event for the first time ever, the HPT being in the state of Florida. But Fred, I, I, I didn't see a lot of you this week. Where were you at? I was betting the dogs, man. It's my new thing. It takes a lot of energy, time, preparation to handicap the dogs like this. No, I will hand it to you. Your record was pretty darn good. What's your secret this week? That's very, very complex. What you do is you watch the dogs go to the starting gate. Whichever one poops, that's the one I'm betting. The lighter. We had a lot of great players here this week in the state of Florida joining us on the HBT. A lot of familiar faces too. We had a half million dollar prize pool. Tonight someone's going to walk away with $168,000 in cash. Now, Fred, if you could handicap this final table, which one of the five rounders remaining is going to take this thing home? Couldn't tell you yet. We're just going to have to wait and see which one poops. Let's meet the five players that are left at our final table. In seat number one, this is Rebecca Karansky from Longwood, Florida. She is a college student who has her parents watching her play poker for the very first time. She's been on a bit of a slide lately, not second in chips anymore, but plenty of chips to play with. This is Nick Schwarman from Orlando, Florida. He's a 23-year-old poker pro, and Fred, he's got his buddies in the crowd. Hopefully, he's celebrating an HPT championship tonight. In seat number four, this is Joe Stempek. He's a financial advisor, describes himself as happily divorced. Chris and I will remain commentless about that and also loves taking his daughter to all the amusement parks around the Florida area. Originally from New York and now living in Longwood, Florida. In seat five, this is Rod Rodrique. He's a CEO of his own company and says he's just a recreational player with no aspirations of playing professionally. In seat number six, this gentleman is a professional. It's Travis Klein from Gainesville, Florida. Travis has never enjoyed this much success in his young budding career. He's lapping it up, and despite wearing that Packers jersey, he's an all right guy, <laughs> sitting with 1.7 million in chips. And here's what we are playing for tonight, almost $168,000 in cash. And also our winner tonight will get a seat to the year-end HPT Championship Open coming up in just a couple of weeks in Michigan. 
what a tight race at the top. Joe has the chip lead by the slimmest of margins. Nick right behind him. He's been the chip leader all night long. And then it is Travis, Rebecca, and Rod as the short stack right now with only 925,000 in chips. Blinds are 50 and 100,000 with a 10K ante. So Rod's going to need to get moving. Rod first act on this hand. He will fold it now to Travis. We are on Travis Klein, a professional Travis poker player, six, lives in Gainesville, Travis Florida. Falls. We'll go to seat number one, that's Rebecca. And now back to Rebecca, four. fresh off the double up. To our small blind, our chip leader, Nick Schwarman from Orlando, Florida. Surprise, surprise, Nick is going to raise it up here pre-flop. 230K. And Joe will make the call with ace deuce. So our first and second in chips will go head to head. The flop is queen, ace, tray. Oh, both players hit top pair. Nick's got the best of them with the seven kicker. And 20,000 is. And he is going to lead out for 220,000. And what is Joe thinking? He's thinking, well, I've got ace deuce. You hit the ace, it's almost the worst case yeah. scenario. <laughs> Nick raised into me. Is this going to be one of the times where Nick was raising with nothing or where Nick was raising with a legitimate hand? Well, Joe is getting a count on Nick's stack. He's got just a little less than you do, Joe. If these players get it all in the middle here, this would be a huge pot. Raise. Raise has been announced by Joe. Webb. Well, Joe obviously thinks that his ace deuce is ahead, and he is going to raise. The original bet is 220,000. Raises to a half a million. And he's going to make it a half a million straight, so it's kind of a min raise. Yep. Action back to Nick. Back to Nick in the two seat. And now, same scenario as Joe. What does Nick think about his A7? That's not something great either. But then you got to be wondering, okay, what did he have in the big blinds? Blind versus blind. I have no idea what Joe could be holding. Well, Nick is going to make the call here. And now the tension at this final table has just been ratcheted up a couple of ticks. And let's take a look at the turn. It is a six of hearts. And we start with Nick. Nick will and check. now Joe picks up a flush draw. And we'll Nick checks. So now to Joe. Will he see a free river? Well, if Joe thought he had the best hand with Ace Deuce, now he certainly loves his hand as he picks up the nut draw. 1.5 million in the pot. Do you want him to call or do you want him to fold with this bet, Fred? Joe announces a bet Joe of 650,000 of 650,000 into a 1.5 million chip pot that's not a very big bet a little under half the pot and now for Nick you've got a double suited board you're sitting on a mediocre ace Nick was the pre-flop raiser, but Joe is taking the lead in the betting on the flop and here on the turn. And now it's Nick that's going to go all in. And Joe quickly calls him. And Joe probably thought he was ahead the whole way. Finds out he's in trouble. He needs to find a deuce or a heart to win it. Or a three or a six will chop it. Seven. Good luck, bud. Who's got who? Okay, Donnelly. Well, this is number one versus two in chips. And here comes the river. It's another queen, and Nick is going to win the hand. Joe will not be eliminated, because Joe barely had him covered. Nick's seven barely plays. Aces and queens with a seven kicker, and now Joe's chip stack isn't going to even reach the rail at this final table. He is in big trouble. I don't have many chips. Wow. You'll notice that we are playing with plaques here at our final table. I'm all in. Twenty-five and fifty thousand dollar plaques are in play. I don't think I have a choice. I gotta take one for the team. I know you do. Uh, so, so Joe is gonna go all in in the small blind with nine deuce versus Rod in the big blind. Now, you know, if I'm Joe, I realize we do have a ten thousand chip ante. You might have wanted to wait a couple hands. Well, I haven't looked at him, and I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> the distinguished gentleman at this final table is probably just going to go ahead and call him blind. 
and five. I call. Rod Rodrique, I love I your why. style, my man. He I makes the call no with eight six, and look at this. Joe's, Joe's gonna be ahead. <laughs> well, <laughs> Joe is gonna like what he sees. He's ahead in a race. All right. He flips over to eight six. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's All see right. if the comeback starts <laughs> now <laughs> for Joe, yeah. or if Rod is gonna eliminate our second player at this final table. Yeah. Rod looking to get lucky for the elimination the of Joe Stempek. Joe hoping to double up. He's got a cruise to take his daughter on. He wants to get the nice cabin. Here we go. Flop is queen seven six. Unfortunate for Joe's daughter. Rod does pull ahead. He flops a pair of sixes. Sixes. Go ahead and see the turn card, please. And the turn is an ace. And now Joe's hoping to find a nine on the river, or he will be our fifth place finisher. Copy that. I'm not going to ask Let's go ahead and see that river card. I'm not going to do it. And the river's a nine! Don't book the interior room yet, sweetie. We might have a balcony on that cruise ship. <laughs> The short stack gets lucky, hits the nine on the river, doubles up. And Chris, you know as well as I do, a no limit Texas hold him, a couple of double ups. Joe can get right back in this thing. And you actually look. Look at him, you gotta be laughing. I did look. I figured I was lying. Well, we will continue here at the final table as Joe is fresh off his double up and Rod tries to regroup himself after the loss. I'm sorry, man. That I'm sorry. Like, wasn't a very big pot, but both those players I'll don't have a whole lot of chips. Down. It was important to each okay. of them. Fred you gonna hunt me down? I'm Joe from Okoe, Florida. Uh, I have 1.5 million in chips. I qualified for the tournament through a $360 satellite, and uh, that's what I've got in it. This is insane. I really didn't think I was going to get here, um, but it's it's magical. First place payday would be uh, bills paid off, a uh, nice vacation for myself and my daughter, and uh, playing some more poker. I enjoy going to the theme parks with my daughter, spending time with her, um, taking her out. We go to you know Disney, Universal, uh, beach, just spending time with her. That's what it's all about. Uh, I haven't told my daughter that uh, I've made the final table yet. Um, she's uh, she's eight years old. I'm actually going to tell her, call her tonight, and tell her that we're going on a Disney cruise here in January. So that's what we're going to do with the prize money. All right, Rebecca is going to be first to act. She's got King three. She is a college student here in Florida. She folds. And now to Nick. Nick has his plaques and chips well organized. Nice little fortress over there. And per usual, Nick Schwarman is raising, this time with Ace-10. Nick learned how to play the game when he was 13 years old, playing $5 home games. You smell correct. I'm all in. And Joe is going to try for two in a row. He's going all in with suited connectors. Wow. And Rod looks down at Ace Jack. Well, Rod has the best hand pre-flop right now, but when you've got a razor and an all-in ahead of you, Ace Jack shrinks up pretty quick. Yeah, and he will let it go. I appreciate that. So now action's coming back to Nick. Folds and we go back. This is his chance to get away from it. <laughs> he will make the call. And I folded a great hand. Easy call for the chip leader. And now Nick is going to see he's ahead, but Joe is live. Oh, well, Fred, you were talking about making a couple of double ups. Can he make it two for two? Joe needs to stay alive, otherwise, we're going to be down to four handed play here at our final table. See, I was ahead. Were you? What'd you have? Ace Jack. Oh, you should have called. Okay. Joe hoping to get lucky two hands in a row. Here comes the flop. It's deuce four ace. And that's a horrible flop for Joe. Not only does Nick flop top pair, but two spades hit. Let's go ahead and see the turn card. And the turn is a five of spades, and that's going to do it. Joe is drawing dead and is walking away from this final table with 33 grand in cash. Well, Joe's plans were to take his daughter yeah, on a cruise. I think this prize money will get a nice Caribbean adventure for father and daughter to enjoy. <laughs> all right, Joe, I have to go back to the hand. Uh, boy, really, all you needed was a heart, my friend. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah, I thought I was good there. Uh, flush draw, you know, I was live with my other card and uh, didn't come. But uh, it's all good. Well, you're going home with just over 33,000. Your daughter is watching this on television. Anything you want to say to her? Yeah, we're going on a cruise, baby. 
They're going on a cruise and you're going to Disney. Thanks so much for yep. playing. We'll see you again, brother. Thanks, sir. More poker from Daytona Beach when we come back on the HPT. Welcome back to the HPT from the Daytona Beach Kennel Club and Poker Room. This week we made a lot of new friends here in the state of Florida and saw some familiar HPT faces and also some notables joined us in the field. Our current leader in the Player of the Year race and of course past champion Jordan Jane made the trip along with Annie Duke, Greg Raymer and WSOP main event final table alum and Epic Poker League champion Chino Ream. Greg Raymer offered up one of his signature boot camps this week and all of our notables made it to day two of this event, but none of them did cash. Here is the updated chip count. Nick still with a big chip lead, 7.7 .7 million in chips, and our new short stack at the table is Rod. Rebecca and Travis way behind Nick as he just puts it on cruise control and walked us in for at least to a heads-up match. I don't want to, you know, jinx him or anything, but it looks pretty darn good right now. <laughs> well, if you're giving them the endorsement, the jinx is in. Blinds continuing at 50 and 100,000 with a 10,000 chip ante. To Travis. We're over to Travis Klein. He will fold. And now to Rebecca. to Rebecca. Five, six of hearts. Don't win. Don't win. What? And it looks like she's going to limp out of the small blind. And it looks like she wants to see a cheap made. flop of their baby New connectors. Checks. And the chip leader is going to the oblige. players. So two 20-somethings will see this flop together. Here we go. Flop is 8-4-4 four, four with a couple of spades. Sorry with Rebecca. Well, Rebecca hits a gut shot straight draw. Rebecca needs a seven. Sense. And she's going oh, all in. Ah, it should take one and for the team. Nick, take with just nine rod. high, has That's to that. fold the whoop. That's a risky play. Remember the last time she had 8-10? All right, we continue on at our final table. Travis Klein, first to act. Travis looks down at queen eight. Travis folds, folds. seven four for Rebecca. Don't look at my two. She Rebecca folds, folds. and now over to Nick in the small blind. No kidding. And he moves all in with Jack Deuce, and now to the short stack. And we move over to Rod in the five. Rod with just four six. Huh? Gamble. He can yeah, still afford to see some more hands. Doesn't need to necessarily call him off here with lackluster fold. holdings. Fold. And shows. Nick just refuses to respect the elders. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fred, I think what he's not respecting is the well less than a million <laughs> chips in front of Rod. Probably should have gambled. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it pretty spot. soon. No, I didn't like crack him. You, you fold. Playing for 168K <laughs> here tonight at the Daytona oh. Beach yeah, Kennel yeah, Club in Daytona Beach, Florida. If you step out the back door, you can actually see the Daytona Speedway here from the Kennel Club. You can hear it, too. <laughs> and now to Rod on the button. Oh, Rod looked like he was going to play. He moved his card protector over, but thought wiser. I'm on the morphine drip. Jack Deuce for Travis. Travis Klein is from Gainesville, Florida. Outside of poker, he likes playing golf, tennis, and investing. Of course... I wouldn't know much about the investing Travis portion. You got to have money to do that. And twenty. I like spending money. <laughs> <laughs> you invest in products from Target. Sure. Travis raises up with two hundred and twenty thousand with Jack Deuce, and back to Rebecca. Rebecca is going to make the call. She's a fan of those baby connectors. And Rebecca. Makes Easy to get away from if you don't hit them. So. We have two players. But then when you do oh. hit something around them, that's when things start to get difficult and dicey. Let's oh, see a flop between flop, Travis please. and Rebecca. Flop is King start Deuce Eight, a great flop to get away from 5-4 with. Rebecca flops nothing. Travis had the lead going in, adds a pair of deuces. And now he is betting after bet Rebecca checks. 200,000 is the bet. Rebecca. That's a fold. Travis and Rebecca wins. can't continue to waste chips like that, just calling and folding to a continuation bet. Travis proclaimed before we got started today, thinks he's the best player at this final table, but Fred, they don't always win. All right, my name is Travis Klein. I've never had success like this. Uh, my friends have before, and uh, it's just nice to finally make a big final table like this. I've been a uh, poker pro for probably about five years. I used to be a student at Florida State, and uh, 
used to play poker on the side during when I was going to school there. But uh, it's not that bad. I definitely enjoy my lifestyle. And one of my main hobbies is investing. I've been uh, investing in the stock market since I was in fourth grade. So my uh, dad was the one who got me into it. When I used to grow up with my parents, they were always, we always play card games, you know, and my dad taught me about investing. So we've always been like, enjoyed the risk. So I have definitely grew up in that lifestyle. More poker from Daytona Beach when we come back on the HPT. Hi, my name is Rod Rodrigue. Uh, I am from Longwood, Florida, and uh, I am president and CEO of a uh, small consulting company called TimeWise Management Services. Yes, I am. Uh, I was in the Navy uh, back here. Uh, way back in 1965, 66, 67, and I learned how to play poker uh, uh, going to Vietnam. Yes, this, uh, we have a great program. Uh, we love to help veterans, and it's called the MOST program, Mobile Operator Skills Training. And we've put about 1,000 people to work, and about half of those have been veterans, and we're planning on trying to put about 10,000 families, uh, veterans and their families, to work over the next few years. Uh, we owe these people so much. Uh, and it's great to thank them for their service, but we've got to do more. We've got to get them those jobs, and it's all about jobs and about giving back their dignity and their pride. Well, the thoughts going through my mind is I want to tell my wife I told you so. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I bought in and thought I would take a chance, and it's turned out quite well. And uh, I'm excited about it and uh, glad to be here. Nick, now with over eight million in chips, it's becoming a question of who wants second place? <laughs> <laughs> Almost three quarters of the chips in play. It's definitely Nick's to lose. Seat number two. And he's going to start out with blinds at 60 and 120,000. Nick folds. Over to Rod. Rod's got 10 5. Rod been pretty Rod card dead seven. at this final table so far. Over to Travis in seat About six. 800,000, a little over. Travis wanting an inventory of the big blind stack. Blinds moving up to 60 and 120. Rebecca's 800,000 stack is definitely a short one. Four, five. Well, at this point, they're all short <laughs> except for Nick's. And Travis looks down at pocket sixes and puts all the chips in the middle. And a call from Rebecca. Rebecca Don't know how she did it, but finds the pocket aces. aces. And Travis's aces. luck might have just run six. out against Rebecca. What great timing for Rebecca Koransky. She is getting inventoried on her chips, gets bet into, and wakes up with rockets. Is that okay for you? Thank you. Fred, you good? <laughs> And poor Travis, okay, so again, you know, right, short hand of poker, a white pair is pretty good, just ran into a buzzsaw. Going up against Travis. So Rebecca is all in and is at risk with her pocket aces. And here comes the flop. It is queen, four, jack, a couple of hearts. Great MC. flop for Rebecca. Travis hoping to find a six on the turn of the river or he is gone. Okay, the aces are still in the lead. Ryan, let's go ahead and see the turn card. And the turn, another queen. Turn so Travis queen. down to just one of the two sixes left in the deck. Otherwise, Rebecca's going to double up. Fives and fours. Now suck out on the river, please. Let's go ahead and see that river card. And the river is a nine. Rebecca doubles up. Rebecca wins. And now Travis becomes our short stack at this final table. Rebecca gets some much-needed chips. Her mom and dad watching her play poker for the very first time and watching her play for $168,000. We asked her about playing on TV. She said, you know what, I'm just here to focus on the players and the cards. I got to forget about the cameras, the lights, and everything else. Just focus on what I'm doing. Rebecca is often seen at several LIPS events around the United States. LIPS standing for Ladies International Poker Series. Good friends of ours. Okay, the old man's going Rod's in. Rod's going oh, to raise. And here we go. Rod gives his speech, grabs his chips, and puts his tournament life on ace four offsuit. The crowd watching is rooting for Rod. He's been very entertaining at this final table. Unfortunately, Rebecca wakes up huge here. Well, you have to cheer extra hard as she has ace jack getting an inventory. Now the question is, does Rebecca just flat here, or does she shove them all in with the big stack playing behind her? 
Well, she chooses to call, but you make a great point, Chris. An isolation would have been good there. And here it comes, Nick. Hello, squeeze play. He raises all in, putting Rebecca's tournament life at line. If she calls, she has to lay it down. And look at this. Rebecca lays down the best hand. Would have been a huge favorite. Instead, Rod's going to the lead. But you know how as well as I do, this looks like a chop waiting to happen. Well, maybe a misstep there by the Brady's amateur Rebecca. She should have shoved all her chops, chips in the middle. She had over two million. There's no way Nick is calling a two million chip bet with Ace Three. Let's see if it works out for her in this spot, and she can get what she's hoping for in the end is just to move up the pace. Scale. Rod has Ace Four. Well, Rod is going into this flop ahead. Has Nick out kicked? Okay, you guys ready? But as you can see by the percentages, there's a very good chance these two will right. chop this pot. Let's go ahead and please see the Here we go, Rod's tournament life on the line. Here's the flop, it is three, six, king. Nick pairs his three and ruins Rod's evening. Unfortunate flop for Rod, and you can see it in his face there. Only three outs make Nick a winner. One of those come right on the flop, and now Rod hoping for a four. Turn is another king. And well, now a six would chop this pot. Otherwise, Rod is hoping to find a there. four Let's for the win. See that river card, please. The river is yeah. another king, right. and Rod is king. going to be eliminated so in fourth house. place Thanks. tonight Thanks. here on the HPT. Give it up, everybody, for Rod. Go for it. All right, Rod. Well, uh, when the cards were shown, I thought we'd maybe have a chop pot there, yeah. but th that Nick, you see, he's pesky, Incredible. man. Incredible. These young players are terrific. And I was fortunate just to stay in this long, so I'm very happy with my outcome. And a very nice payday for you. Let's talk about the money. What are your plans? Uh, I'm going to pass it around to the kids, probably. And you called yourself one of the old-timers, but if you ask me, this old-timer represented very well. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it, and thank you for uh, the way you uh, brought all this professionalism to the game. I really enjoyed it. Plenty more final table action yet to come. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the HPT. It's time for our Pro Tip of the Week with 2004 World Series of Poker Main Event Champion, Greg Raymer. Now, Fred, one of the scariest things you can do to an opponent is check, raise them. But Mr. Raymer is going to show you how to do it at the right time and make it work. So here you are out of position with a hand that you're not going to just check and fold. So often, what's going to be the correct thing is to go for the check raise. Now, you might just have what you think is the best hand and you're trying to get more money in the pot or you might be bluffing or semi-bluffing with a draw and you think the check raise gives you the best chance to get your opponent to fold. Now did you notice something there? In both cases we expected something different out of my opponent. That's the key. Whether you should check raise or not depends upon whether you're trying to get the guy to call and get more money in the pot or whether you're trying to get him to fold. In either case whether you should check raise or just bet out depends upon what he's going to do. So you have to know him well enough to predict which play is more likely to produce the desired result. Well, Fred, here we go. Uh, Travis has less than half a million in chips. Rebecca has 1.5 million. Nick has enough that he doesn't even need to be at this final table any longer. He has second place wrapped up. There is no reason why he should not get heads up at least here, Fred. 82% of the chips in play right now. These players are going to step cautiously around Nick. I didn't hear the action there. Nick Difference between third and second place money is $33,000. 50 for third place, 83000 for second place. Nick's all in with A6, and Travis is going to A6 call for his tournament life A6. with A6. <laughs> Well, I don't know how Nick is going to pull this one out as a winner, but something tells me he's going to. Maybe, maybe. No surprise that Nick put all of his chips in the middle. I am slightly surprised okay. that Travis did call. See the flop, Ryan. But let's see what happens. Here comes the flop. It is 10-7 Jack Rainbow. Ahead, this hand will be a chop pot. And so Travis will stay alive. Nick will put the chips back that he didn't even know that were gone back to his stack. And we will move on to our next hand here at the final table. Again, third place, $50,000. Second place, $83,000. Our newest HPT champ walks with just under one hundred and sixty-eight k. Our chip leader is on the button, wakes gonna up with 10 queen. He's going to make it 350000 to go. And the raise is to three. Five, and zero, another one, ace Travis. for Travis. Well, if he's willing to call Travis, all in with ace six, he should be willing in. to shove it all in with ace nine, and he does. 
Rebecca Foltz. Rebecca Foltz. And now the decision back on the chip leader. We're back right. to Nick. Oh, is this 120? I think it's 850. Cool. Nick makes the And he the is call. going to call, so here we go. Travis is at risk, but ahead going to the flop against the massive chip leader in Nick. 10. Travis Nick has two nine. live cards. Travis hoping to find an ace Travis and just end the drama right here on the flop. MC. Two past HBT champions, Leon Morford and Dan Zogman on the rail, oh, watching okay, interestingly. Ryan, go ahead and see the flop, please. And here comes the flop. It's deuce seven, Jack. Travis is ace nine, still in the lead. Let's go ahead and see. All right, here comes the turn. It is an ace, and so ace. Travis way ahead now, but Nick does pick up a straight draw. Nick needs a king on the river to knock Travis out and get heads up with Rebecca. Otherwise, Travis is going to double up. The river card, please. And the river is a king. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. We have seen some wicked rivers tonight, and that is one that really takes the cake. And the look on Nick's face and Travis's face says it all. What are you going to do? It's just his night. Sometimes you just can't beat fate. All right, Trav. We, I've heard all the sayings. That's poker, the river, this, that. What do you do, man? Not much more you can say than that. I mean, I played my best, and the cards went the way they did, so. Hit the four earlier, got lucky, and he got lucky on the river right there, so no problem. You know, this Nick is a very good poker player, but man, is he running good right now. Definitely running good, got all the chips, so I like his chances to win, so we'll see. How about your payday, though? Just over 50K, it's a big score. What's your plans for the cash? Uh, probably put some investments into work, and we'll see about the rest. And keep cheering on those Packers. Oh, yeah, so we'll all see. All right, Travis, it was a pleasure having you at the final table. Good luck to you, Appreciate sir. it. Thanks, man. When we come back, it's Heads Up Poker with Nick and Rebecca next on the HPT. Daddy, who's going to win the race? Who's going to win? No, sister, you're going to win. No, who's the top dog? Who's the top dog? Give me big hugs. Oh, Daddy, dog, give me big hugs. All right, Edie, here's the thing. I got four kids at home, Edie. I need this, okay, girl? We're going to run fast. And if you don't run fast, I might not get to go home. So Edie, look at me here. We're a team, and I want to go home tomorrow. Okay, Edie, let's, let's go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special race here at the Daytona Beach Kennel Club. It is the Heartland Poker Tour Celebrity Challenge. Fabulous greyhounds making their way down the track, each of them represented by one of our celebrities on the Heartland Poker Tour. And joining us tonight, we have Mr. Greg Raymer. Miss Annie Duke, co-founders Todd Anderson, Greg Lang, and the most colorful character you'll ever find in the poker room, Mr. Money Mike. And in the number two hole, this is Atashote Edie, weighing in at 54 pounds. The celebrity representing this dog is the gentleman in the green, Mr. Chris Hansen, my partner on the show. Chris is not from Dateline NBC, he is from the HPT. In the number three slot, this is Blue Beacon, weighing in at 69 pounds. The celebrity representing Blue Beacon is none other than the HPT floor director, James Larson, right there in the HPT jacket. If this horse is anything like my buddy James Larson, that dog will be looking for a 40-year-old divorcee with low standards. If you fit this description fine, James, he'll buy you a Happy Meal. I can tell you right now his high grade is A, uh, low grade is a B, 69 pounds, and last two races in a row, your horse has won. Wow. So, you know, I could go happen. for three in a row. Here tonight. Yeah, I'm horse five. Okay. Yeah. I got 20 bucks okay. that says I beat his seven. $20. Hey, come on, three. Come on, baby. pull off the upset. Weeks of training, make sure I could go the distance. Did you make any money though? That's the real I question. I did. 
I did. I bet $15 on win, place, or show. So I'm not sure what it paid because I didn't see the payouts, but I am sure the dinner's on me. Well, Nick has a slight advantage as we start heads up as far as the chips are concerned. and want to say a big thanks to Dom Nero, the poker room manager, and also to Amy, who is the tournament director here at Daytona Beach Kennel Club. Rebecca We've worked with both the of them for a long time, and it's uh, nice that we get to come Rebecca see them down here in Florida. Made a lot of new friends here in Florida, too. The whole Absolutely. staff here has been great. Look at this. First hand heads up. Rebecca gets it all in with ace 10, and Nick quickly folds. I don't think she has to do that on every hand, but Fred, she might just want to do that on every hand. She needs a quick double up. Nick is light years ahead of her in the chips right now. Then we start with 260. Nick, Nick wakes up with ace 8, makes it 260,000 to go. Rebecca with a flat tire. She will fold right, jack four. Second place tonight, $83,000 in cash. First place, 168000 Blinds are sixty and 120000 Whoever wins tonight will also get a package to come and join us in Mount Pleasant, Michigan at Soaring Eagle Casino. That is our year-end HPT Championship Open. All of the champions from Season 7 will be there. All battling it out for player of the year on the HPT. It's a tight player of the year race as well. I'm all in. Rebecca again, all in. Again, Nick folds. I don't mind that strategy, Fred. You know what? Go ahead and put the chips in the middle. He's probably going to call you with an inferior hand. The trick is you got to get a good hand when he says, I call. <laughs> right. Easier said than done. This time she's got ace four. Any ace heads up is a great ace. She moves all in. Nick folds. Rebecca playing today. Her mom and dad in the audience watching her play poker for the very first time. And Fred, when you need some support, mom and dad are always there for you. My name is Rebecca Karansky. I am from Longwood, Florida. I thought about becoming a pro poker player, but the reason why I'm really going to school is because I really would like to have a career. And to have this as a passion in my life will be a great thing, and I'm definitely going to pursue it. Well, my parents, this is their first time ever watching me play poker. They are very excited. Um, my mother came in, she's like, I don't understand things she's doing, but I, I love for her to uh, win it all. I am so excited for her. This is a passion that she has been taken on and she's really studied hard and I don't know a thing about poker. All I know is she rakes in those chips and she won, so <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> My name is Nick Foreman. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Uh, spare time, I go on a lot of snowboarding trips. I, lo I love going to the mountains like that. I work on cars a lot. I got a couple cars that I've been messing around with, doing some things too, and just got a boat. So I've been going wakeboarding a lot and just uh, hanging out with friends mostly. You know, I'm 23, so just, kind of, just trying to have a good time. You know, have fun. Yeah, April 15th, uh, which was known as Black Friday in the poker world, that was an awful day for me and pretty much every other online poker player out there. Uh, Anyone that played online for a living no longer got to play. They stopped it for the United States players. I was actually forced to, me, my brother, all my friends, like we all played for a living. So we went and got a house up in Canada. We established a residency up there and changed our accounts to Canadian accounts. So we can actually play when we're up in Canada at all. And I go up there a decent amount just to, uh, just to put in online sessions, traveling back and forth. Nick started this table as the chip leader, and Fred, only for a brief period of time did he give it up, and as we are heads up here, he has a commanding chip lead over Rebecca, but she did freshly just double up, and he will start talking numbers. She doubles up again. Well, now you're scratching just under $4 million in chips, but Fred, that's a long way down the road. But possible, and that's what Rebecca Karansky is fighting for here. Nick raises Rebecca out of her big blind. He scoops that up. That's what we've seen so far, heads up, is just some pre-flop raising and kind of swapping of blinds here. These two are going to lock horns sooner or later, and we've seen that Rebecca likes these types of hands, these connecting cards. It looks like Rebecca is making a raise. She makes it 370000 to Nick. And fold by Nick. He will fold. <clears throat> Nick confident with the chip lead that he has, but he does know that you just don't want to give somebody any confidence whatsoever. You want to keep them on the offense, and you can just keep playing defense and choose your spot when you want to make a stand. 
Well, Nick is going to give her an opportunity. He's all in with queen six, and she's going to make the call with ace nine. And here we go. Can Rebecca double up, or will Nick be the next HPT champion? We just said she doubles up again. It's going to be just under four million in chips, 3.5 million exact, and she can stay ahead here. The rail interested, mom and dad are interested. All are hoping that Rebecca's hand holds up. And here comes the flop. It is six, deuce, seven. Well, Nick does pull ahead here. He flops the six, but Rebecca still has two over cards, hoping to find an ace or a nine. And the turn is an eight. And now there's more outs for Rebecca. She's turned an open-ended straight draw, so a nine, an ace, a five, or a ten, and she will double up. Uh, otherwise, Let's Nick will be our newest HPT champion. Card. Here comes the river. It is a deuce of hearts. That is it. Nick Schwarman is the newest HPT champion and our very first champ in the state of Florida. All right, everybody, give it up for our new champion, everybody. Nick going home with $167,000. Being able to say you're an HPT champion will turn some heads at your next tournament, but saying you knocked out the entire table, now that'll make them fear you even more. Tonight was Nick's night. His first victim was Ronnie Lamb. Ronnie shoved his wired nines right into Nick's wired kings. Ouch! Ronnie couldn't find one of the two nines left in the deck and went home in sixth place with almost $28,000. Then it was Nick's ace-10 against Joe's eight-nine. Nick flopped his ace and turned the nut flush, sending Joe home with over $33,000 in cash. Nick struck again when his ace-3 outflopped Rod by hitting the miracle three to pull ahead of Rod's ace-4. Rod left us in fourth place with almost $40,000. They say you have to play well and run well to take down a poker tournament. Nick showed that he was walking on water when his Queen 10 rivered the Broadway straight, cracking Travis's pair of aces. Travis went home in third place with over 50 grand. The Fred Bevel curse is alive and well. Seems like every time I pick somebody, they never win. My apologies to Rebecca. I was rooting for you. She could not come from behind after Nick outflopped her by hitting a six on the flop. Rebecca left with over $83,000 for her talents at the table, making her mom proud. Almost 84,000 is what you're going home with. 84,000. It's a lot of money. What's your plans with it? Well, I'll probably uh, save it for college tuition. Probably just saving up some money and uh, getting a new car. Like a 94 Toyota Camry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll probably get a new car. That's the first big purchase I'll get. But other than that, everything else is going in the bank. <laughs> and best of all, your mom got to watch you in the front row. Yes. yes. Awesome. And she's very cute. Awesome. Well, congratulations. It was so much fun having thank you. you. Rebecca, we hope to see you again on the HPC. Yes, thank Thanks. you. And I'm now joined with our latest HPT champion, Nick Schwarman, everybody. And joining me for the cash presentation, our good friend here from the Daytona Beach Kennel Club and Poker Room, Dom Nero and the Cash Gals. And by the way, Nick, I don't know if you've checked, but that's 167,000 plus. Is it all sinking in, my friend? I mean, it, it's a little unrealistic, but you know, it looks pretty nice. I kind of want to hold it, so. <laughs> well, we'll get to that. Just just hold on one second. I want to talk about your play. You ran, uh, you ran great all week. You're a great poker player, but you had a little luck on your side. I did have a little luck. You know, I was raising a lot of hands, playing a lot of hands, so I'm going to get it in ahead and behind sometimes. And when I was behind, I caught up. When I was ahead, I held. So Woo! made it pretty easy on me. All right, Nick. The hard part's oh, over. Man. Ladies, would you please do the honor and hand Nick the cash? Because this all needs to sink in. Are you going to be able to hold all that, my friend? That's a little heavy, but it feels good. That's 167 plus. I've got to ask. What are your plans with all of that money? Uh, I just started building a, a new car from the ground up, and it's gonna it's gonna cost a lot. It's gonna cost pretty much close to this to do it. So it's gonna take like four or five months, but it's a big project I'm looking forward to doing. So that's where it's going, most of it. <laughs> Is it heavy? I mean, it's a little heavy. My arms are getting a little weighted down, but no, it feels good. It smells good. It smells, it good. smells good, he <laughs> says. All right, well, congratulations. And Dom, I want to thank you and your staff and the Cash Girls. What a great event here at the Daytona Beach Kennel Club and Poker Room. It's time to celebrate. We got the cash. The last man standing with the money in his hand, Mr. Nick.
Now, I know Nick lost the chip lead for like a nanosecond here at this <laughs> final table, but really, Fred, they were eating out the palm of his hand. He was playing them on a string. This was his final table, so congratulations to Nick, our newest HPT champion and our first ever champ in the state of Florida. Now, do you think you've got what it takes to win an HPT title? Well, then log on to our website, hptpoker.com, to find out about upcoming events. For James Larson and Fred Bevel, I'm Chris Hansen. We'll see you next time right here on the HPT.